Many advancements in warfare techniques were made during this period of time, and secret weapons were developed that might leave you shocked and confused. Various airplanes were tested out with bizarre designs, and ways to attack the enemy were forever evolving. While some of these might have been effective if more time was available to develop the project, others really seemed doomed from the beginning. From dropping small planes instead of bombs, to hot air balloons packing some serious heat, here is the strangest World War II technology. But first, quick shoutouts goes to some of our first viewers in our strangest law enforcement technology video. We hope you're still watching because you're featured in today's upload. Number 15. Fugo Balloon Bombs You might think it looks innocent when you see a hot air balloon, but if you saw these things during World War II, you should probably run the other way. In fact, these were some of the only weapons to actually reach the American mainland during World War II, and the Japanese utilized wind streams against us. Although many were launched, only a few of them actually made the distance, but still managed to cause six fatalities. Those only occurred when people actually tried touching the balloons, which caused them to explode. They were the first weapons to be used at an intercontinental range, but bad weather conditions made them particularly hard to aim. Number 14. The Flying Tank Some military helicopters out there might get the nickname of the Flying Tank, but this strange prototype is actually a flying tank. This is what's known as the Antonov A-40, which is basically a six-ton tank attached to a glider plane. The idea was to use gliders to gently transport tanks to the front lines, but this appeared to have some difficulties. This Soviet design was never actually seen on the battlefield, but actually was tested out in 1942. The extreme drag created by the tank's sheer weight was enough for them to call off the project, and the Soviets looked for other ways to transport tanks. Still terrifying nonetheless. Number 13. The Horton Ho 229 You might notice that this aircraft already looks slightly similar to modern-day stealth bombers. If the Nazis were around a little bit longer, it could have been a devastating weapon to be used against the Allies. It was a flying wing with jet power and was intended to carry a thousand kilograms of bombs, a distance of a thousand kilometers. They already had an advanced knowledge when it came to jet power and developed the first jet fighter known as the Messerschmitt. They weren't able to make enough changes to it after a prototype had already crashed. It's believed that they were also about to fit the plane with some of the first anti-radar material made from charcoal dust. The only surviving copy of the Horton Ho 229 is found at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. Number 12. The Krumlauf Being able to see and shoot around corners has been a dream of many soldiers in the past. With modern warfare often taking place in urban settings, being able to shoot around corners gives people a huge advantage. The Krumlauf was developed to be attached to the German Sturmgewehr, which allowed for shooting around corners, but each barrel would have been replaced every 300 shots or so. The barrel would be quickly worn out from the intense pressure of shooting out bullets at a curved angle. The bolts would often break apart, giving it shotgun-like qualities and spray out fragments of metal at a high velocity. Number 11. The Flying Jeep This photo we see here shows us an experimental design used by the British in hopes of producing a flying jeep from 1943 to 1944. The vehicle would have been placed inside a glider plane and dropped at a high altitude. The rotor would turn on during a free fall and hopefully fall at a reasonable speed before hitting the ground. A few test flights took place that were successful, showing that it could fly at a speed of around 65 miles an hour. Eventually, it was even able to take off from ground level, but as other vehicles were being developed that could basically do the job better, the project was cancelled. In modern times, the military has shown interest in developing flying Humvees. Number 10. The Elephant Tank It's possible that if the Elephant Tank had received more funding than the V-2 rocket, the Germans could have put up a better fight when the Soviets invaded. Also known as the Panzerjager Tiger, or the Ferdinand, this one will never reach the hands of any tank collector because there are only two that actually exist to this day. One of them is located in Moscow and the other one in the U.S. Ordnance Museum. Designed by Porsche, it was deployed during the Battle of Kursk. It weighs in at roughly 65 metric tons with no ammo and featured a devastating 88mm gun, one of the largest put on any tank during World War II. The front armor was 10 inches thick, had a six-man capacity, and could easily penetrate 10 inches of armor on other tanks at a range of two to 3,000 meters. Only 91 were ever produced, but they featured flaws such as a lack of a secondary weapon, a rotating turret, and a lack of a good range of vision. Number 9. X-Class British Submarines 
The British X-Class was designed in secrecy by the Royal Navy and was tested out at a training base in Scotland called the Isle of Lewis. This midget submarine was only about 52 feet long and could remain at sea for days until the crew ran out of food or needed some fresh air finally. A four-man crew would normally be able to reach a maximum range of about 1,200 miles and reach depths of about 300 feet. The periscope was small and unreliable to say the least. The one hatch that was built to get in and out of proved to be a lethal design because more were needed to escape quickly and effectively. These would prove to be useful in battles across the North Sea against the Germans. Number 8. The Flying Pancake Could the Flying Pancake be the reason for so many Foo Fighters during World War II? Or were they possibly designed after the unidentified objects that were flying through the skies? In any case, it features a very peculiar design for that time and as you can tell, a flat disc-like body. The Navy started testing the experimental aircraft in the 1940s and a wooden prototype was constructed. Finally, it flew, but probably not like you'd expect a flying pancake to fly. The main problem with it was the complicated gearbox system that connected the energy from the engine to the propellers. Its test flight resulted in UFO sightings by locals in Connecticut, probably thinking an alien invasion was finally taking place. It could reach a decent speed of 138 miles an hour and it made developments to future near-vertical takeoff technology. Number 7. Japanese Suicide Subs During World War II, the Japanese used a form of suicidal warfare techniques such as the kamikaze airplanes. But did you know they also did the same with submarines as well? The Shinyo suicide boats were basically human, manned torpedoes known as Kaiten torpedoes. This literally translated to the return to heaven. The Japanese soldiers would much rather die in battle than surrender to the Americans. They were put to use and carried 3,420 tons of explosives and to add to that, they were fueled with diesel to make them even more deadly. Although they did have trouble supplying oxygen to the pilots, they were able to design more efficient models which were able to actually sink American ships. Number 6. The Fukuyuri Attack Suits The Japanese developed quite a few strange experimental weapons in an attempt to ward off the Allied invasion. Here in this photo, we see a design of the Fukuyuri attack suit that would actually allow Japan to strike virtually undetected. The suits contain roughly 33 pounds of explosives and with this much extra weight, they could actually walk on the ocean floor. Once the divers reached the intended target, most likely the American submarines and battleships, they would then detonate themselves, hoping to bring down the ship. It's never been officially recorded that these battle suits were put to use, but American soldiers have claimed to have seen the suicide swimmers on various occasions. Number 5. McDonnell XF-85 Goblin Imagine keeping a small airplane inside another airplane and dropping it instead of a bomb. It would certainly surprise the enemies. That's what the Americans had in mind when they designed this aircraft known as a parasite fighter. This idea didn't really seem too useful however and the army decided to melt down these fighters and they weren't put to use. Only a few prototypes were ever created and they were deemed as unsafe to the pilots. Since it was so small, it would have been considered to be quite inferior to the enemy aircraft and the idea was abandoned. They were actually more focused on designing something that could refuel bombers instead of a mini plane. Still a cool concept either way and the two are still on display, one in Ohio and one in Nebraska. Number 4. The Panjurandum One of Britain's most mysterious experimental weapons that never saw combat was the Panjurandum, which was basically an axle with two wheels, some explosives and some fireworks. The wheels were propelled with rockets and was meant to be used against Hitler's Atlantic Wall, but the experiments were extreme failures. The plan would have been to let these off of landing boats and explode into German pillboxes and so on. Each wheel was about 10 feet in diameter and tubes were filled with explosives which would allow for them to turn. However, it was very unpredictable and would move extremely erratically. Number 3. The Blumenvoss BV-141 The Blumenvoss BV-141 was designed as a reconnaissance aircraft to scout the battlefield and 13 were actually built. Despite it flying quite well actually, it never actually went into full-scale production. The little compartment on the right side of the plane would have stored a machine gunner. There are no more of these airplanes on displays at museums or anywhere. The Allies came across quite a few wrecked Blumenvosses but were never able to actually find one that worked. Number 2. The Schwerer Gustav This huge railway gun that we see here was used for annihilating the French fortifications of the Maginot Line. In any case, the Schwerer Gustav wasn't really needed to win the battle and it was deployed during Operation Barbarossa and in the Battle of Sevastopol. It was capable of destroying munition depots 100 feet underground. 
The large cannon weighed 1,350 tons and could fire shells an estimated 29 miles. The barrel itself was an insane 106 feet long and shot an ammunition that was 80 centimeters in diameter. It's believed that the pieces of the gun were recovered by the Soviets or at least found by them in a forest north of Auerbach in eastern Germany. And number 1. The Kugelpanzer Also known as the Tumbleweed Tank, there only appears to be one prototype and it was supposed to have been mainly used as a scouting vehicle. When the Russians came across the vehicle, they were actually intrigued to say the least. If the Germans had the chance to actually use this thing, it could have been devastating. The material that the tank was made from still remains a mystery and recreating one is likely impossible since the engine was stripped before it was uncovered. The material would have been resistant to small arms fire, but it likely wouldn't be able to hold up against anything more powerful. It also would have carried a one-man crew and one 7.62mm machine gun.